I think one of the main takeaways is um, write a really strong press release. A lot of the time, um, you won't have the contacts, you won't know the journalists you're approaching, you're sending them something completely fresh and they've never heard of myeloma. So you have to send them something that tells them everything they could possibly want to know about myeloma. So that really starts with a strong headline, something if they see it as their email subject, they, they just feel compelled to click on it. So what we find is we always use a very strong case study a patient case study and we kind of try to tell their story in the headline so if they've had a delayed diagnosis or um sort of anything that could that just makes them think oh wow that is shocking and just makes them want to click so the reason we have um really detailed and um press releases and we call them the complete package is because um, journalists in the UK anyway are pushed for time. They don't have time to research something. They may have never have heard about this particular cancer. So we want to put as much information in there as possible and in simple terms so that if they wanted to use it, they wouldn't have to do interviews. They don't have to do additional research. They can just copy paste it, put it in their newspaper on their website or run a new story based on that. So um, a strong headline is the key thing. Uh, we always say in the UK, a very short but, but, but uh, information packed uh, introduction that's about 24 words, keep it simple, um, have all the information in there. And then um, because people's attention span isn't what we hope it will be, put all your key information in the first three paragraphs all your takeaways and um, we know that journalists do that when they write articles so treat your press release as if it were an article and you were writing it for the audience this journalist's audience and um, one thing we would say is make sure that you don't use jargon and um, it will probably be this journalist's first time hearing about myeloma they may just switch off when they hear about a cancer they've never heard of but if you explain it simply you're encouraging them to just think Oh, I can write about that. I understand it. And um, one thing we would say is stick to just three statistics if you can. People just can't take it numbers, at least in the British press, we find that there's hardly ever any statistics in there. Um, one thing I would say is use strong quotes, patient quotes, but also it's a good opportunity to share quotes from your chief exec or anyone at your charity. And if you use a quote from your chief exec or anyone at your patient organization, make sure you've got a call to action in there or a strong message. If you're sending this because the government isn't doing enough, say, we want the government to do more. Um, something like this is great for journalists. It's a good like soundbite and they're more likely to keep it in. Uh, there's so many more things you could do, um, but one simple thing that a lot of people forget is pictures. Um, whether it's on a website or in a newspaper or even you know uh, for TV, they will actually use pictures and um, You'd be surprised how many times people call you at six and say the picture is blurry, it's too small, it's the wrong shape. So just send them a few of the patient. Anyone quoted in the press release should really be photographed and, and you should send it um, to them. Um, and one, one thing we always do at Myeloma UK, we find that works, is press releases can't be that long. So there's a lot of information you want to share with people, like the key symptoms of myeloma, what, what your organization does. Um, key statistics. So that's the opportunity at the bottom to do a, a, a fact file and to just do lots of bullet points. Anything you want them to know, the journalist may or may not use it, but at least you've done your job. You've shared everything that anyone would possibly want to know about myeloma. Um, and one thing I would recommend is always double checking if you're mentioning an event, uh, think who, what, where and when. Um, it's so easy to say something's happening and you forget to say where or when. Um, and my personal tip, as something I do all the time, is when in doubt, always bring it back to the impact on patients. It's so easy, especially when you're talking about a big campaign or a survey or a study you've done. You have so many statistics in your mind. And of course, for, for us, they're all super important. But for journalists, really, they're thinking, what's the key thing? What's going to be my headline? So just if, you, if you, there's too much information and you're not sure what to include, think. Does it impact a patient directly? Is it relevant? And if it's not, maybe just take it out and ignore it. So building relationship with the press is, is a long process. And um, I don't know about other countries, but in the UK, it's made harder by the fact that a lot of people are made redundant. People move on. It's a tough industry. And we find that sometimes we've got a good contact 
and then a month later they're gone. So um, there's different ways you can do this. And I think instead of just focusing on maybe, oh, I want to be in this one newspaper and this is the one person I need to speak to, um, what I what I would say is, if you can, so we subscribe to a um, media database, and that means you get access, in theory, to every journalist working in the UK, and you can figure out who works in health, who works in radio, TV, and we create lists, and then we send, so in the beginning, what I did, I sent our press releases to absolutely everyone, just so they would even know who we are as a charity, and um, because most people don't, um, and then sometimes we wouldn't hear back from them, they wouldn't even open them, open our press releases. But you know, eventually when something came up about cancer or blood cancer, they might just remember, oh, I got this email or many emails from that woman at that charity. But more generally, if you kind of email everyone, um, someone's bound to get back to you and just say, oh, that's an interesting story. Um, and then that could be a small local paper, but then, you know, that story in the local paper might be picked up by a national paper and then you work your way up. When it comes to communications, it's important to have some things in mind. Um, the first one is media usually reaches us uh, with a very tight deadlines. So either you respond fast or the opportunity is gone. To respond fast, but also to respond with consistency, it's important to prepare the key messages you would like to share with media. For example, your main goals, uh, the main results of your projects, things you want to highlight from your event. Um, so your spokespeople have a clear idea of what they should say uh, when they are asked about the project. Um, to select your spoke, spoke people is important also to evaluate their public speaking skills, uh, depending also the kind of interview they are going to respond. For example, it's not the same to respond to um, a local newspaper interview or a national television interview. So depending on that, you could select uh, the best spoke people for, for your organization. MP can support our members in the communications area by helping them with a press release template, uh, helping them preparing the key messages for the event they are going to prepare. Uh, also, um, dissemination and communication through the MP newsletter, the MP website, and also helping them to organize and support uh, webinars and recording of those webinars and even uh, filming interviews.